everyone, it's Thor with Creative Twilight. Wanted to show how to paint lightning. I just done a tutorial on painting marble and it's very similar to lightning. I do have a lightning tutorial on my blog, so definitely check that out. I'll link it. It's going to cover more than I'm going to do here. What I'm going to focus on here is teaching you the technique. On the blog, I have a lot of different variations and ways you can play with it, which I'll show a little of here as well. So what I'm doing is going over a black base coat. I'm going to do sort of a traditional blue looking lightning bolt. So that's what I'm going to start with. So the first color I'm going to use is enchanted blue. This will go on very thin. This will be the first layer to define the basic pattern. And it's a darker blue because I wanted to blend with the black a bit without having to do a lot of work. So I'm going to load my brush, keep it really thin and start with that and define this pattern. So with the pattern, you want to make it random and sort of wiggle the brush around so that you're not creating just a, a straight line, which wouldn't look super realistic. And I'm going to create little arms coming off it for, you know, the, the other smaller branches of the lightning bolt itself. And you can make as many of these as you want. It's really up to you. And I'm just trying to get these to show up. Might add a few more little arms on here. I'm sure there's a term that's not arms. <laughs> that's just what I'm using for the sake of discussion here. So you're looking for random, but you want it to look like a lightning bolt at the same time, which can be a little tricky to do. So I think that looks pretty decent for where I'm going to start. I'm getting way more light on here than what it actually looks like. So to me, it's darker, but it's coming across pretty bright on camera, which is perfect for what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do for the second layer is come in with a lighter blue, something a little more electric. So for this, I'm using Lothern Blue. Again, it's going to be thin. What I'm going to focus on here is staying within the lines I've already established so that it blends out on the sides and, and works into the background. So with this pretty thin, I want to follow what I've established here. There'll be another layer I do after this, so this doesn't have to be perfect. And you can use this to create little areas that weren't previously defined too. They'll just be brighter bolts. They won't blend in as much, which would be pretty realistic as well. Went a little thin, so I'm just taking the same thing and just coming in to, to widen this particular layer a bit. The next layer will be the, the thinnest line that we put in here. And not all of it has to be the same strength. If you don't reinforce certain ones, that's fine, especially the parts that are coming off the main bolt. They don't need to be as bright because they wouldn't be the main energies through the center, and that should always be the brightest element that you're working with. So that's pretty good. What I'll do now is the same color, a little less thin, because this time I want to put a pretty solid layer right in the middle of this, focusing 
on the center bolt and less on the the bolts that are coming off here and it should get a little duller as you get towards the bottom so it's fine if your paint wears out and it it fades out towards the bottom that would be a pretty natural look I will reinforce these a little bit mostly where they're closer to the bolt and let them fade out as they point down I just want these to show up a little more And that's basically it. So there's your, your basic lightning bolt. Now if you're not happy with how that first layer went on, what I can do, and I'll do it here for demonstration, is take some black, really thin, and if you want to blend it out, just run really thin layer of black around the edges here. Just be careful to not get too far inside. And you can blend out that first layer. I could also take that blue that I started with and do the same thing to, to blend it out if I wanted to widen my bolt some. So I'll just do this really quick and I'll hit the ends a little bit just to dull them down where it's down towards the bottom of the bolt. Now if you wanted to take this up a notch you could go ahead and grab white and throw that in here too. So I'll take a little white and I'm going to be pretty selective and try to keep this very thin. I don't want it to be a pure white, I want it to blend with that blue underneath. So that little white really brings it forward and, and makes it pop quite a bit. So that's all there is to it. Another thing you can do, which I'll show you, is you can, if you're working over something like this, that's, that's a black base coat, is you can do your lightning bolts in white and then hit them with a glaze and play with it. So what I'll do here is I'm going to start with a relatively bright gray, and that's going to be my, my first layer that I put down, because again, I want this to blend in with the base coat and sketch out the shape. I don't want it to pull at the bottom here, so I'll pull this back up. And you want to, as you're doing these, kind of wiggle the brush. You don't want perfectly straight lines. I tend to have a tendency to paint my lightning bolts in a certain way, I've noticed. I think we all do that. You get into a habit. So there's that gray. I have a lighter gray that I'm going to go up to from here. This one's pretty close to white. Same thing as I did before. I just want to redefine a little thinner on the middle, the pattern that's already established. And it's fine if it bounces around a bit. See, I don't have complete connection over here. It, it makes it look a little more interesting. The energy kind of bounces around. It's not the complete same strength all the way through. So there's the gray. I'm just going to let this set up a little bit. So the final one is going to be with the white. Same as I did with the other one. Let's come in very thin line. Try to get in the middle of all of this to just really enhance the the look of it being energy. It's not going to be as distinct over this very light gray I did, but that's fine. 
because like I said what we will do after is add a glaze to this to make this a little more interesting so this is a good way to approach it if you don't necessarily have all of the colors you want to use say you want a purple lightning bolt and you don't have any purples but you have a purple wash or a purple glaze or maybe you just have one purple color and you can create a glaze from that so I will call that good I'm not going to bother blending out any of the edges or anything because the glaze will do that for me uh, I didn't pull anything out ahead of time I mentioned purple so what I'll do is I'll grab my purple wash it doesn't have to be a glaze either a wash is perfectly fine which is what I'm going to do here so I've got my purple wash I'm going to load my brush but I'm going to wipe most of it off on my wet palette I want to use this as a glaze to just tint I'm not looking to shade so now that I've done that I will take it over the white. This is why I said doing this on black is easier because all this purple wash isn't going to mess up something underneath. If the base coat you're painting over is something you don't want to mess up then you want to use the actual colors but when you're painting on black you can get away with playing a lot more. So that's on there. It's pretty thin. It gave it a slight purple tint. Not a lot so I'll do another glaze just give this a moment to dry the thing with washes and glazes is always go light you can build up and get the color you want if you go light if you go too heavy you can't really undo it so always go light to multiple layers until you get exactly the color you're looking for I will go a little thicker this time just so I'm not having to do this three four times and really get this on here now you can do this to really load up your brush what it will do is deposit in certain areas and create a more interesting look to the lightning bolt as well so I'm loading up quite a bit not as much as if I were actually washing a miniature but enough to make sure that it's going to come through on camera here and you can see as it's drying I now have a purple tint to it so you can do that with any any wash, any glaze, work with a white lightning bolt and kind of play with it and get what you want. What I could do from here is even add another color to make it even more interesting. So I've got a blue glaze. This is an old one. Actually, yeah, I'll run with the blue. I was thinking something different since I did a, a blue lightning bolt over there but it will show you how you can combine colors to get a really interesting look instead of just going pure one color if you layer glazes or washes you can get something that looks really unique now this is still wet which is fine because I'm kind of playing with this so now I'm going to come in with this blue and sort of mix it all around you can see that the result is even though it's not dry yet I've still got purple tones in here, but I've got a more blue looking lightning bolt. It's not that vibrant energy look as a lightning bolt on the left, but it's interesting. At least I think. It's similar, but you can see those subtle purple tones. I could add a red to this as well. Same thing, just kind of layering and creating something very distinct and unique. It would be great if you were painting energy. Um, maybe it's a, a power weapon or a magical item if you layer these different things you can create these unique looks so really that's all there is to it that's all there is to painting a lightning bolt so hopefully you found this interesting if you liked it please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and if you haven't please subscribe catch you all later